guys and welcome to our beautiful city of Chicago. What's better than taking a tour with the locals? And I know what you're gonna say, it doesn't sound like I'm from Chicago, but that's probably because you're used to the south side accent and we live on the north side of Chicago. But we've lived here for 20 years. And when we have people who visit us from out of town, we came up with a list of the 10 favorite places where we'd like to take them. And this is what we're gonna show you today. So our number one attraction in Chicago is Millennium Park. It's actually hard to believe that this thing didn't even exist 20 years ago, but now it has become the tourist magnet of Chicago. It's really a remarkable gateway to the city. The Bean, also known as Cloud Gate, is an incredible piece of artwork that reflects the entire skyline of the city. Millennium Park is a year-round kind of venue where you can ice skate in the wintertime. And then just behind the beam is the pavilion made by Frank Gehry, the architect who made the Museum of Bilbao, and it's just so weird. Well, it, it also very nicely complements the beam because the two are very reflective, particularly at night. I really like going down there to see concerts. And then just next to the beam, you have the Crown Fountain. It's also a very unique experience. You've got those two fountains that are facing each other, and you have the faces that are constantly changing. In the hot summer days, people love to come down there and cool off. And you have these enormous faces of local citizens that volunteer to have their faces filmed, and the water come from people's mouths almost like they're spitting onto the crowd. So number two on our list is the Maggie Daly Park is just very close to Millennium Park and if you have kids that should be one of the prime uh, attractions you should go to. It's basically an amusement park but it's completely free and you have hundreds of kids that uh, enjoy themselves on the park. The Maggie Daly Park has attractions for all ages. You get for the really small ones and then for the mid-age kids so everybody is going to enjoy themselves over there. And what is really spectacular about this park is that you also have the skyline and it connects directly to Millennium Park. So you can take a short walk across the BP Bridge. And the BP Bridge is a good complement to the Frank Gehry architecture. It's super shiny. It's got this very weird shape, like a kind of a snake shape. It's a really interesting experience. So our number three place is the Chicago Riverwalk. Uh, the Riverwalk as well is fairly new and now all of a sudden it's also becoming a crowd favorite. It's super vibrant, you got restaurants on the side, there's just so much life on the water. Back in the days we used to tell our guests to take the uh, architectural cruise and now that the Riverwalk is there you can actually just see all the buildings uh, just from the river without having to pay for the river cruise. And at the corner of the river in Michigan Avenue, you got the Tribune Tower. Probably one of the landmark buildings in the city. The things that are embedded into the Tribune Tower come from the Great Wall, the Cologne Cathedral. And our absolute favorite building in Chicago is the Aqua. This spectacular building designed by our homegrown architect, Jeannie Gang. And then at the end of the river, close to the lake, is the Centennial Plaza. And every hour on top of the hour, you'll see a water cannon that shoots water across the river. Number four on our list is the uh, lakefront. Chicago has the most beautiful skyline in the world. And the best place to watch the skyline is from a boat, if you can. But even if you don't have a boat, you can also get a great skyline from the museum campus. Between the aquarium and the planetarium, you have this amazing view of the entire skyline with the Sears Tower all the way to the uh, Navy Pier. Another spot that has a fantastic view of the city is Buckingham Fountain. Especially at night when it lights up, it's coordinated to music. The other thing that's great about Chicago is the beaches. When you think of Chicago, you don't really think of Chicago as a beach resort because it's inland, but we have Lake Michigan. It's exactly like the ocean, except it doesn't smell like salt. Chicago's lakefront is really enormous. It spans more than 20 miles. There are so many gems along the way, and much of it you can navigate just by bike. So 
fifth one on our list is Michigan Avenue. Michigan Avenue is the high street of Chicago. And Michigan Avenue is famous for its shopping. All the big brands are there. The other thing that makes Michigan Avenue really unique is the way it connects across the river down to Millennium Park. And my favorite place to shop on Michigan Avenue is the Water Tower Place. I love the fountains on the escalators on the way there. And my favorite place at the Water Tower is the Lego store. And I especially like that big dragon that spans from one end of the store to the other. I really love the history of Water Tower Place. The water towers there are original to the city. It's one of the only things that survived the Great Chicago Fire. And then close to the water tower is the John Hancock. And from the top of the John Hancock, you have the best view of the city. On the 95th floor, you have the signature room. That's probably the only thing on our list that is not free, but it's just a bar and you just pay your drink just like at any other bar. But once you get your drink, you have this incredible view of the loop, of the lake, of the river, of uh, Lincoln Park on the north side. So just for the price of a drink, you get the, the best view in the city. Which is amazing right in the middle of the city we have this zoo that is free and you got all the animals you would expect you got lions you got leopards they have tons of apes and monkeys and you have gorillas you have chimpanzees it's always a kid's favorite so Lincoln Park Zoo has everything that every little kid would want to see zebras and kangaroos camels and alpacas and also birds of prey like those huge vultures. And it's got a great displays of Arctic animals uh, like penguins, polar bears, and seals. Just next to the zoo is the Lincoln Park Conservatory, where you'll find every type of plant species that you can imagine in one place. It's like a huge greenhouse, and when you're inside, it feels like the jungle. It's actually great to go there in the winter, during the Chicago winter, and you got palm trees, and you got coconut trees. My favorite time to go to the conservatory is in the spring when they have all the flower exhibits. And just north of Lincoln Park is number seven on our list, uh, the neighborhood of Wrigleyville. There's nothing like going to Wrigley Field and having a brat and a beer and some peanuts on a sunny day and watching a game. So obviously going to Wrigley Field is not free, but what's free is hanging around the stadium. The thing that's kind of unique about Wrigley Field is that it's a downtown stadium. It's surrounded by bars and restaurants and it's super lively on game day. Just a great experience. They've also invested a lot of money in building a number of new facilities around the ballpark to just enhance the experience. You have all the statues of all the legends of uh, the Cubs. That stadium has always been awesome in Inside, but it used to be a dump outside and they spent a lot of money renovating it. It's actually really nice now. Yeah. And on the south side of the city is number eight on our list, Hyde Park. Hyde Park is the home of the University of Chicago and it's a really nice campus, the exact traditional campus that you think of when you think of a prestigious university. Rockefeller Chapel is a beautiful example of a Gothic church brought to the United States. Just a beautiful chapel. And then if you're in Hyde Park, you should also go see the Roby House by Frank Lloyd Wright. It's not free, but if you're there, you should absolutely go see it. The Roby House is one of Frank Lloyd Wright's masterpieces. The original owner is a car enthusiast. It's one of the only Frank Lloyd Wright houses you'll see with a three car garage. And then number nine on our list is the Baha'i Temple. Technically, the Baha'i Temple is not in Chicago, it's in Evanston, but you can go there with the L, so we just decided to put it on the list because it's such an incredible place. The Baha'i Temple is one of the most beautiful buildings that I've ever seen. I love the fact that it represents all the world's religions. You feel a real sense of peace when you walk around it, and the gardens and fountains around it really add to the serenity of the place. It is kind of a little Taj Mahal uh, right here in Chicago. It took, I think, 40 years to build build the Baha'i Temple, and it's the only one in North America. And 10 
fifth on our list is Navy Pier. We had to put Navy Pier on the list because after all it's the most visited attraction in Chicago. But we never take anybody to Navy Pier, we never go there, I just don't get it. I like looking at Navy Pier from a distance and seeing the Ferris wheel, but I hate going there just because of the crowds. It's very congested. There's not a lot to do in Navy Pier, it's just a big jetty on the lake and you just walk along the pier from one end to the next and at the very end of the pier you have a view of the lake. But it is like a slice of Chicago. You can see all kinds of great theater and there's a children's museum, great place to take the kids. And if you want to, all of the restaurants in all the neighborhoods in Chicago are on Navy Pier. So quick trip and see the sights. You can go to Navy Pier and see a lot of Chicago. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and put your comments in the comment section below. And if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, we're going to put a link somewhere right here and click the little bell to get notifications when we have new videos. And if you want to watch more of our videos, we're going to put one right here and we're going to put another one right there. Bye. Bye.